Hello and welcome to Biotechnica. We are yet again back with one more highly informative and interesting video on biotech industry. And today we are talking about an industry which is not just growing at a 20% CATR, but it's going to and expected to hit a $100 billion industry by 2030. But having said that, we are at the cusp of a revolution and it's very important for all of us to know what kind of remuneration, what kind of salaries we can expect when we join this industry. So I have a couple of pointers, in fact, 12 pointers in front of us to you know share with all of you. First one is a disclaimer, which is this is not a complete information which I'm giving you because the industry is highly dynamic, but you can use this information as a reference point. Okay, this is where you start. But yeah, the data which I'm going to share, it, you know, it keeps changing with day in, day out. The second one, these figures which keep changing because the industry is dynamic, the demands are dynamic and the demands in the industry keeps changing. So accordingly, the salary numbers, you know, inflation stuff change. Okay, so that's the first thing which I wanted to highlight that is the disclaimer. The second thing which I have is, okay, so what are the degrees you require? So you can either have BSc or BTEC, MSc or MTech, PhD, postdoc. Now, one thing very interesting here is the master's degree and the BTEC degree is somewhat, um, you know, uh, equivalent. So it's not like you don't get confused that if I have done a BTEC, I should do an MTEC or to be equivalent to MSc. It's not like that. The industry treats you as good as, a, you know, BTEC is as good as a MSc. Now, Coming to the question which we have is, okay, what degree I should go for? Now, you have to know this, that if you are a bachelor's degree, the salaries will be low, but you will be easily absorbed into the production, manufacturing, stuff like that. Okay. So once you get in there, you can grow on the corporate ladder. That's one way. Or other ways, you can grow in the academics and then get into the industry. I would personally prefer growing into the academic ladder and then getting into the industry, corporate sector, because if we get in... Prior to that, uh, the growth is slow, okay, and there can be a scope issue in future. So I want to take that risk. So you can have a BSc, MSc, PhD, postdoc, the degrees flow like this. Now, if you ask which degree is preferable, a PhD is preferable in the industry, but for highly specialized job with high salary. So highly specialized job with high salary are very less in the industry. So it's not that, okay, if you do a PhD, the industry will readily absorb you. But yes, your chances of getting a higher salary is high. But at the same time, the number of jobs for that particular, you know, level will be less. Okay. I will clarify that in a bit from now. But as of now, these are the degree degrees which you have got. The next one, on what basis the salaries are decided in the industry. So the first thing is knowledge, obviously, what kind of knowledge you possess. Next will be skills. What kind of skill set you have? Applied skills, lab skills, you know. What kind of experience you have? So once you have the experience, like, okay, a 10 year experience holder will be given a higher, you know, opportunity than a low one. So that's that's uh, that. Now coming to networking, that also plays a very crucial factor because industry is small, it's niche. So, you know, uh, good people know each other, right? So you can always network with them and get a better remuneration. There. So that's, these are the four bases on which your salaries are decided. Now coming to this demand and supply gap. So I, why I have written it here because you should know this. Uh, when the IT revolution hit India, a lot of colleges jumped in and started providing BCA, MCA, BTEC in uh, computer science and IT, all that. Okay. And when biotech in, uh, revolution hit India, all these colleges thought that, okay, if we start having these uh, call, uh, courses, uh, we will uh, mint a lot of money. So that is where there was a lot of supply of students who uh, got into this sector, but the demand was not as high. So what happened is a lot of people remained unemployed. Doesn't mean that the industry cannot employ you. But yes, when you have a lot of people doing the same degree, then you're, you also become part of the crowd. So it's very important to be, you know, uh, not to be a part of the crowd, rather you should be unique. So that we'll talk a bit later from now. But uh, you, you should know this. This is the reason the employability is low. It is not because the industry is not employing. It is because these colleges has, have pushed a lot of students into this sector, which was not required. Okay. There always has to be a balance between demand and supply. 
Now coming to uh, the biotech industry, salary analysis. So we'll come to the last part, which is how to grow future scope and how to succeed a little later. But for now, let's look at the company wise uh, data. So I have included top 10 companies, biotech companies where you can get a job. So you have Gentech, uh, 3.6 to 8 lakhs is a salary, yeah, entry level salaries you get there. Thumb Fisher, again, you start at 3 lakhs, it goes up to 8.6. These are entry level salaries, depending on various positions they have. Merck starts from 3.6, goes up to 9 lakhs. Uh, Novartis, uh, 3.6 to 9 lakhs. Pfizer is the next, 4, 4 lakh starting salary up to 8.5 lakhs, that's a starting salary. Bharat Biotech, an Indian uh, vaccine company, 3 to 6 lakhs, that's a starting salary they give. Biocon starts at 2.6, goes up to 7 lakhs. ITC starts at 3.6, goes up to 9 lakhs. Serum Institute of India, 4.8 to 9 lakhs. And Dr. Reddy is 2.6 to 9 lakhs. Now, the next question, obviously, you will ask is, sir, how to get in these, into these companies? So, first thing you have to know is there's a lot of demand and supply gap. There's a lot of supply and less of demand. So, you need to have either of these four, okay, or all four is great. So, you need to have the right knowledge, okay, you need to have the right skill set, you need to have the right experience, and then you need to do the right networking. On that basis, you can get into these companies easily. But if you want me to do an elaborate video on how to get into these companies, let me know in the comment section, I can definitely do that for you. Now, coming to the uh, next part, which is city. So, okay, um, I've included just major uh, four cities. I've not included Kolkata because we don't see much of uh, biotech companies as such in Kolkata. So, that's the reason not included Kolkata. So, we do have companies in New Delhi and NCR sector. Uh, that's They offer salaries between 3 lakhs to 7 lakhs. Bangalore, we see in between 2.2 to 11 lakhs. Uh, the living cost in Bangalore is a little low. So, yeah, that's why. Uh, Compared to, you know, of course, uh, New Delhi has the lowest living cost. So now Hyderabad, 2 to 12 lakhs, which is obviously Telangana, and Mumbai, 3.6 to 12 lakhs. Again, the living cost is very high. But yeah, you get a lot of companies near to Mumbai and Pune. So that's where the, you know, Serum Institute and uh, other companies are. Bharat Biotech is in uh, Hyderabad, Biocon is in Bangalore. So, you know, these are the major hubs city wise. Now let's come to state wise. So Karnataka, to you. C 2.2 to 15 lakhs. Very interestingly, there are a lot of companies in the outskirts of Karnataka, outskirts of Bangalore, where uh, you get very good salary, but they are in really outskirts. Like you won't get a city life, you'll get a village life, but yeah, uh, they give, provide you uh, living, accommodation, everything. But yeah, so that's the salary there. Tamil Nadu also, we see up to 18 lakhs uh, salaries. Delhi, we see 3 to 7 lakhs. Telangana, 2 to 12 lakhs, Maharashtra 2.2 to 22 lakhs. Now, ma majority of companies are in either Maharashtra or Karnataka or Telangana. So, these are the three, uh, you know, cities when the states and of course, Tamil Nadu. So, four states you can count upon where the majority of biotech companies are. If you look at pharma companies, then you will have to go to Gujarat or you have to go to Himachal Pradesh. So that's where the states are. Now, Coming, coming to the department wise, I, I have found some data which I am presenting in front of you. So, R&D uh, starts at around 2 lakhs, goes up to 16 lakhs, depends on the patents you gather and the degree you have, PhD, postdoc. Pharmaceuticals, you have 1.9 to 18 lakhs. Again, uh, you have manufacturing, formulation development, F&D. Vaccines, off late, this is uh, picked up. So, now it's starting at 3 lakhs, goes up to 12 or 15 lakhs also. Cardiology, where the MBBS doctors who get into want to get into research or MD doctors want to get into research or PhD in cardiology. So those people 2.4 to 13 lakhs. Now this is a very scopic area. Academics is one area where you can get in. So that's like professor or assistant professor. So you need a CSI net and gate and you know stuff. Actually CSI net and gate you require everywhere but yeah academics for sure. So you get a government job but again um, PhDs and postdocs are preferred. Now coming to position wise uh, we can broadly divide into management and manufacturing and production. So when you go to, you know, uh, management, the CEO salaries goes up to 50 lakhs plus, CSOs 30 lakhs plus, vice presidents 30 lakhs plus. And, you know, these are dynamic numbers. These keep changing company to company. Now we'll come to the position wise. So junior production officer starts, you know, 4 lakhs onwards, production supervisor 4.5 lakhs onwards, production managers, again, uh, 5 lakhs onwards. So this is, uh, uh, you know, based on our survey which we have done now there are multitude of other uh, positions also available which it will be very difficult to you know compress into this video in this flow chart but i'm trying my best to do as much as possible 
now coming to uh, the next part which is how to grow so the first thing which I, I have a suggestion for all of you is keep learning keep learning new technologies and gain experience on hands-on gain hand, gain experience on virtual trainings meet as many people as you can do networking you know get to know people in your circle and uh, one of the best ways to get started is of course you can you know network with me uh, and probably i can help you out in some of your jobs or uh, careers so yeah you can do that uh, my linkedin link is given in the description you can always connect with me coming to the future scope uh, one very important thing here is there's huge scope and demand in us uk european countries and china the reason being these companies have moved on from the IT revolution into the biotech revolution truly. Okay. And there's a lot of research going on. But now if when you come to India, there's a huge supply side. There are a lot of people who are trying to get in. So that is the reason uh, the demand is not as that high. The industry is not growing very fast the way other industries are growing probably. And that's why you will not see, uh, you know, the industry, you know, taking everybody. Industry will be very choosy at this juncture. So if you have specific skill set, they're going to pick you up. So that's for India. But when you look at US, UK, European countries and China, uh, one very important thing which you all should know is it's not that, okay, if I go there and they'll give me a job, they'll give you an underpaid job. Okay. The $2,000 or $3,000 fellowship they'll give you there or salary which they will give you there will be this living cost is so high that it's not that, okay, you'll become a millionaire there. You will still have a very decent uh, you know income there so that's something which you should know and i want to warn you about it now how to succeed in this sector so five things i would like to add here uh upskill reskill cross skill bio it is one way to go forward and latest technologies like crispr molecular biology techniques chromatographic techniques spectroscopic techniques these are the techniques which you should learn so the, we have done a video i think uh, on top 10 lab skills you should have as a fresher you can always go and watch that video i'll try to include that link as well as in the description so this is quickly all about uh, the biotech industry salary analysis and um, i tried to give you a brief overview of what's what's happening around but remember this is not a complete picture to know the complete picture you have to do three things subscribe to biotechnica on telegram but subscribe to biotechnica on uh, you know, Biotechnica Times newsletter, email newsletter. And the third thing is subscribe to Biotechnica on YouTube and Instagram so that you are updated with what's happening on a daily basis because information is your weapon in this battle. Okay. If you have the right information, that's when you can network with the right people and you can get a better high paying job. So this is all about uh, what I wanted to share with all of you in this video. Let me know your video kaisa laga, how was it and uh, your feedbacks are always welcome. Any questions put them down in the comment section. I'll see you in the next one. Till then take care. Bye bye.